let's talk about Wayne Douglas Barlow's Guide to Extraterrestrials. It was originally published in 1979 and published again in 1987 in a second edition, which you see here. It won a Hugo in 1980. And Wayne Douglas Barlow was only 21 when he started working on this book. What is the book? It's an illustration of 50 different extraterrestrials. I'm just going to say aliens from now on because it's a whole lot less syllables. Each picture, each page gives you a right hand page with an illustration of the alien. And the left hand page has a bit of text, the name of the alien, the books that it comes from, usually some detail illustration. This particular one does not have one. 55 separate works are listed in the book throughout the different entries and there are a total of 41 writers for the 50 different aliens. So yes, some writers do get multiple entries. Marlowe's sort of a realistic approach to illustration was something that he brought to these extraterrestrials who he often saw on the covers of science fiction magazines or books that didn't seem to quite represent the aliens they were supposed to depict. He sort of set himself apart from the work his parents were doing. He drew up one of these illustrations and sent it to Ian Summers, who was the art director for a company whose name I don't remember, Ballantyne, for, who was the art director for Ballantyne Books. Beth Meckham was the editor. She collected a list of different aliens and presented them to Barlow, and he went through and selected which illustrations he wanted to create from the list that she gave him. I think Beth also went and wrote all the text for this. Beth did go on later to become a pretty prominent editor at Tor, I believe. We well, hope I got that right. I'm pretty sure I got it right. Barlow took time to make sure that different extraterrestrials or aliens that he put in this book were not the same physically. Each one is unique in a different way. There's not a lot of sameness in this book. There's some very famous aliens in this book, or the aliens that you'll probably recognize. Uh, Solaris from the movie Solaris, for example. The Thing from John Carpenter's The Thing appears in here. And also H.P. Lovecraft's old ones. And we get big names like Le Guin, Asimov, and Herbert. We also get a, a large collection of sort of more obscure names and obscure titles or titles that have kind of fallen by the wayside. The presentation of the aliens here is very static. They all appear to be standing upright, facing the viewer in a white field, almost encyclopedic. And at the back of the book, we get some of Barlow's like sketches that he used to create these. And there you get to see a little bit more action. And of course, it would have been nice to have seen a little bit more in like the two page spread instead of that white background to have some of those sketches that he had done sort of filling in that space. Because of when it was written and or published in 1979, it's sort of like bookmarks the very end of a sort of era of science fiction because it isn't very long after that that we finally get cyberpunk showing up in the scene and we slowly see the sort of space opera type science fiction kind of fall slightly out of favor it never really goes away it still hasn't gone away today but it doesn't dominate like it did in the past obviously not every amazing writer from before 1979 is featured in here. And certainly this is not a representation of all the best science fiction works. If you don't really know where to start with classic science fiction, I think this book does a great job of serving as sort of a guide as to what might be worth your time and what isn't. I don't know how long I'd wanted to read Isaac Asimov's The Gods Themselves or Larry Niven's Ringworld before I actually got the book, just because of the illustrations here. It does a great job of sort of showing you what people really liked and appreciated at that time. And some of the books in here, some of the stories that are mentioned, and even some of the writers are kind of a little bit more difficult to find. Um, I know that in doing some research and compiling the list, I found there were some writers who didn't have anything available in any audio or e-formats. And some of those books are not even in print. So there really was no market for these books except an old used copy. The idea of like, is this book in print? I kind of discovered is a little bit difficult to define because it's like, well, what does it mean if it's in print? How long ago does it have to have been printed for it to still be in print? Just because Amazon maybe doesn't have it for sale as part of Prime, does that mean that it's not in print? There's lots of books that I buy that are brand new books that are not on Amazon. They never end up on Amazon. So 
it's a little hard to define that sort of uh, that metric, but there was definitely some books where it's like, well, the last printing of this book that I can discover was like the 90s or, or the 80s. There's some that like the ebook format is no longer available, which I think is strange. I have to think that uh, either the uh, ownership kind of like being tossed around or maybe a new version of that book is coming up. I'm not really sure. It does make for a kind of an interesting reading challenge where you're going to have to hunt around a little bit for these. I have a compiled list and I'll talk about that separately in the in an actual like Barlow's Guide challenge video. Kind of explore the different formats you're going to have to try to locate some of these books in. There's also a great collection of illustrations in the back of this book, some of which are just sort of like sketches that Barlow had done for the production of the main illustrations in this book. And some of them are for a book that I don't even know if it ever got published. If it has, I really would love to get my hands on it, where he sort of explores this sort of alien world that he was creating. Although I really love the book, those illustrations in the back are just fascinating. I just love them. You should not have too much difficulty finding a copy of this book. Now, if you're trying to look for a, like a like a pristine copy, well, that might be difficult. I certainly don't know what a first edition costs. I imagine it's a little steep, but I know this edition, I mean, the Science Fiction Book Club was hawking this. There must be a number of these books out there. There must be quite a few. I'm, I can only think that. I've seen this cheaply for a long time elsewhere, going around and seeing it. I've actually picked up extra copies at some point, although currently I only have my original one that I got in the 90s. But the book is a lot of fun. And actually one of the best parts about this book, or maybe not the best part exactly, but some little touch that I think is really, really great is there's this fold out in illustration in the middle of the book that shows uh, all the aliens, for the most part, to scale with one another. Oh my God, I just totally bonked it like that. Uh, and I don't know if you can tell, but right above my hand there, above the uh, bear holding the axe, is uh, a photograph of Barlow himself that he uh, used for uh, us to put this all to scale. And here are some of the black and white sketches that Barlow did to kind of develop the main illustrations. And here's some of the sketches he did for the book that I don't know if it ever actually got published. Um, I've never seen it. I've looked for it before. I never found it. I have a number of other Barlow books that are now out of print, which is rather sad because they're wonderful books. Expedition, for example, which is a really great book on Bar by Barlow that I'm pretty sure they did a TV like special on. So just a really fun book to look through and a really great guide to science fiction pre-1979. An unintended positive consequence of this book and the presentation that Barlow gives is that even though these uh, separate aliens don't exist in the same world, and in many cases, like, couldn't exist in the same world, that sort of scale drawing that Barlow provides and the sort of natural history presentation of the whole book seems to suggest that they sort of do, that these things are all, like, have the potential to interact with each other somehow. That, that sort of suggestion is, is never put forth in the book, but because of the format and because of that scale picture that he provides, you sort of get that feeling like they could. It kind of unifies all that science fiction, kind of brings all those stories together. Um, I don't know. I think that is kind of a neat thing. It's something that I've always like thought of or think when I look through this book as though it's more, more like uh, not sort of like here's separate stories by separate authors and separate universes, but rather like... I don't know, almost like a monster manual or something like that. If you like RPGs, uh, tabletop RPGs, I think that this is probably something in here that you're going to like. I always thought it'd be kind of neat to use these aliens in sort of sort of a, like a traveler type situation or something. If I'm going to put it on a 10 scale, I would probably say it's a 9. And that might seem kind of high, but I think like when it came out, it was probably an eight then. Great book, really good. It is a little shy on information. In fact, a little shy is uh, understating quite a bit. It provides no information about the writers or the works that it cites the illustrations come from, which was a problem back when uh, the card catalog was the way you looked up stuff. 
So I didn't have the internet to look up anything about Ringworld or Asimov's The Gods Themselves. I just had to hope that the library had it. And so in that way, it was a pain, but it also meant that you kind of had to put the work in. You kind of had to search around and look for those stories. And it was kind of like a discovery when you found one, like, oh, isn't this cool? I found that story. It's in the book. And you'd have to like write up a little list if you couldn't remember them all, or I guess you could carry it with you if you were very ambitious. That I am aware of currently, and I will check and before I put this out, there is no electronic version of Barlow's Guide to Extraterrestrials which I feel is a bit of a shame. I don't even know why this book isn't even in print anymore. The only thing I can think is that there must be some sort of publishing issue with this or some sort of rights issue, but I still don't think it's too expensive. And actually sub $20 for this book is fine because if you had a new version of this book that was hardback, you're gonna pay at least that anyway. Those heavy gloss magazine, like real thick pages and everything, it would not be a cheap book to print now. Printed in today's printing style and it probably would not be nearly as durable as this because I've had this book for a long time. Go find yourself a copy of Barlow's Guide to Extraterrestrials or go find another book by Barlow. He's got so much great stuff. He did a really great thing with the Inferno, you know, sort of a his take on Barlow, or no, not Barlow's Inferno. It is Barlow's Inferno, that's what it's called. But uh, his take on Dante's Inferno, he kind of does a sort of a modern version of illustration. I think Barlow even writes his own novels now. And I think I have one, but I haven't read it. Maybe I'll read it at some point. I'll read it, oh, I will read it at some point. I just don't know that I'm gonna read it anytime soon. Hmm, fair, right? But he's got a lot of other great stuff out there. I think there's like an Art of Barlow book out there that's uh, reasonably priced, although I don't personally have it. I might have to pick it up just to see if there's some stuff in there that I don't have otherwise. If you can find a copy of Expedition, Barlow's Expedition is a gorgeous and amazing book. Like I said, there's a, some sort of PBS special or something. I don't know if it's a PBS special. There was some sort of a special that they did at one point where they uh, computer generated some of the images that he creates in there. And some of them are a little silly and a little weird, but I think that's part of the fun of that. And it's a really interesting look, like natural history look at life on an alien planet. If you can find that book, uh, worth your time. Also, Barlow's Inferno is great, classic, uh, gothic, horror type painting. There's a sequel called uh, Brush Fire where he did some more illustrations. I have that work too. I uh, got a little damaged unfortunately a long time ago where the uh, place I was staying had a flood and so it got a little soaked but I think I went back and looked at it and I thought well this looks, doesn't look so bad. I almost threw it away. I don't I think it's kind of hard to come by now but uh, I still have it. Barlow's uh, Expedition is a great book. Such great painting and illustration. You know these strange alien life forms on another planet that all have kind of a unified theme. And then of course, I don't think this cover will get me in trouble. So I'm gonna put my hand, right. I don't think it will, but I'm gonna put my hand over there anyways. And then Barlow's Inferno uh, is a great book. There's, a, like I said, there's another one, Barlow's uh, like Brush Fire, which is kind of like a sweet sequel book, but this is sort of like an exploration of hell with a uh, kind of Barlow's unique take. And I think he, he references classic, um, paintings and photography a lot in this book. Hopefully you'll join me or give the uh, Barlow's Reading Guide a challenge. <laughs> Wait a minute, let's try that again. Hopefully you'll join me and just read some of those stories in Barlow that are mentioned in Barlow's Guide to Extraterrestrials and kind of take a look at some of that classic science fiction that's neglected and get yourself a copy of Barlow's Guide to Extraterrestrials. I don't know that it's going to get reprinted because it hasn't been reprinted yet, so I don't really know what the holdup is. Um, eventually, even though there were so many printed, it will become more and more difficult to get a hold of one of those. So get one now while you still can. Sorry in advance if anything that I'm doing here is may drives the price of those books up because it should not be. I, we should stockpile those books and sell them at cost or whatever it costs us to uh, ship them out. But uh, I do not have the uh, resources to buy up uh, hundreds and hundreds of copies to sell to people at a reasonable price. If I could, I would. So best of luck out there. Take care. Thank you. My name is Virgil. This is Literally Books. Uh, like and subscribe. Uh, help a lot. So people say they help a lot. I don't know, but it does. I do appreciate it. Whether it helps me or not, I don't know. That's it. Good luck in your search. I'll see you next time. Hopefully it'll be soon. Bye.